In this lesson, I'd like to talk about using SAS lists. A list on its own is not very useful, but you can iterate over a list and create CSS for everything in that list. In our project, we'll create a list of exercise categories and create CSS for each of them in a simple way without needing to repeat a lot of code. When I say categories, I mean these different workout types here. Before we do that, let's play with lists so we can understand how they work. We will use the SASMeister website again to do this. So if you click on the link attached to the lesson, you can get the starting code to work along with me. I have seven boxes that are all floated to the left. They have a border around them so we can see them right now. If you open the gist and you don't see your CSS and HTML tabs, you can click on these to toggle them to get them to show. I'm going to remove the border since I only had it there so you could see the boxes. What I want is for each box to have a background color set based on the color name in the list. We can see each box has a class name of the color. Normally it's not considered good practice to use color names as a class name, but in this case we're making a rainbow so the class names make sense. Let's look at the CSS we want to generate first so that you understand what we're doing. I'm just cutting and pasting it in, don't bother typing it in. I'm just trying to show you what our end CSS should look like so you understand what I'm doing. The whole point of using SAS is so we don't have to do all this typing. We want to use the list to create selectors for each of these seven list items, and then we want to set the background color to the same color as the name of the class. We can iterate over lists with the at each rule. If you've programmed in any other language, it's similar to going through an array with an each or a for each command. I will type at each to iterate over the list. Then I will say dollar sign color to create a reference to an individual item in my list. Next I'll say in dollar sign rainbow to indicate which list I want to iterate over. Then a curly bracket to start the loop. So for each of these colors, we want to see this code. Dot color for the class name, and then we want to set the property background color to the color name. This is not the real code, it's more pseudocode. But look at how it added these three lines of code seven times, one for each item in our list. I'll remove the CSS that I pasted in and let's generate it instead with the list. Each time we iterate through the list, we're creating a color variable. I can use that color variable in the CSS. Now all the boxes are the violet color. That's because our CSS is not complete. We are setting anything with a class of color to have all seven of these different background colors. It's only the last one that the browser uses, so all the boxes with a class of color are violet. What we really want is the color to show up in the class name. But if we add the dollar sign before the color in the class name here, it won't work. That's because it's generating CSS with an invalid class name. It generates dollar color as the class name, which is invalid. You can't use a variable directly when you're writing properties. You can use them directly to output the values, but not for selectors. With selectors, you need to do what is called interpolate them. There's a nice definition of interpolation on Wikipedia. You can see the variable set to Alice, and when you print out the string, you can use the variable inside of the string or the quote marks by interpolating it. In other words, you grab its value and use that. This shows the syntax for interpolation in Perl or PHP, but we need to use the syntax that SAS expects, which is the pound sign curly brackets. That syntax comes from Ruby, which makes sense since SAS is written in Ruby. Now it works. Look at the CSS generated. When SAS sees the pound sign and curly braces, it knows that it needs to interpolate the variable, so it outputs the word red right after the period, which is what we want. So with five lines of code and the list, we've created CSS for seven different classes quite quickly. The neat thing about this is if we wanted to add another color to the rainbow, we can do it very easily. 
I do have to update the HTML first to add that div with a class of purple. And then I just add purple to the list. And it works right away. I can do it again with orange red. One thing you should know about lists is they do not need to be comma delimited like this one is. SAS is very forgiving this way. You can just use a space, as long as your items in the list don't have any spaces in them. While I'm mixing spaces and commas, the SAS is assuming commas is the delimiter, so it's not working for a while, but once they're all gone, it works again. Also, you might have quotes around your words. It stopped working this time because it put quotes around each property color in the background colors, and this is not valid CS. It didn't put quotes around the class names because we're using interpolation there. So we can interpolate the value to fix this. And now it works again. Another option would be to remove the quotes with the SAS function unquote. I'll remove the interpolation and it stops working again. See the quotes. But when I add unquote, it did as you would guess and it removed the quotes so the boxes display. In this lesson, we have seen the power of using lists. We can use them to create a lot of CSS with just a few lines of code. We've learned how to iterate over a list using the at each command, and we've also learned how to interpolate variables. And finally, we saw a utility function, unquote, which can be used to remove quotes from values. Hopefully you can see the flexibility and usefulness of lists when combined with interpolation and the ability to iterate over the list with the at each command.